What's up everybody, my name's Nick, welcome back to Mystery Money. On today's video, I'm gonna talk about the stimulus package that was just passed by Congress, signed by the President, and basically put into law. I took the last few days to actually go through the bill and look at the actual text and where we can find things. And say what you will about Congress, I feel like I've heard a lot of comments and seen a lot of comments over the last few weeks that, oh, the government programs only help the big guys. They only help the large corporations, a lot of money in their pockets. I feel like Congress did a decent job this time of actually helping small businesses by continuing programs and targeting them specifically, as well as uh, marginalized businesses. Now, you can say what you will about the stimulus checks and everything else and all the bloated foreign aid to other countries and things. I'm not gonna get into that on this video. I'm just gonna talk about the benefits of the programs that they've already passed that are going to truly help small businesses. And you can do me a favor before I get into this bill and smash that like button. One of the biggest programs that was continued from the original CARES Act all the way through this latest passage was the SBA subsidy loan program. What this program did in the original CARES Act was pay six months of principal and interest payments for any outstanding 7A or 504 loans currently in regular servicing status, which means you weren't delinquent, you didn't stop paying, uh, you weren't in default. They paid six months of those payments. That began March and ran all the way through October. And that was a considerable amount of money for most people that had these loans. My side business benefited from it. We got six months of our one of our truck payments paid. They're continuing that program. So they're giving an additional three months of payments to those existing borrowers. It'll happen automatically. You don't have to apply, you don't have to do anything. It will begin with February's payment and go for three months. Now, the kicker is, if you were a business that lost a majority of your revenue or all of your revenue, uh, and it's listed out by Nix codes, which is the code that operates under your business, and there's specific ones that they are listing that begin with a three-digit code or two-digit code, the list is in the bill. They will be paying an additional five months of payments on those loans. So you will get an additional eight months of payments on top of the six months that you got from the original CARES Act. This is a huge benefit for these businesses. These are truly your businesses that are at risk. If they needed an SBA loan to start a business or to, to continue their business, they are the most vulnerable in this environment. This even goes for new borrowers. If you are a new SBA borrower from February until September of 21, the SBA will pay eight months of payments. That's huge. That's a huge benefit to the businesses starting out because your cash flow is already tight from starting a business or buying a business. They are also waiving the guarantee fee, which makes buying a business or starting a business incredibly cheap considering the alternative. That SBA guarantee fee went from 3% to 3.75%. That's a huge amount. Now the subsidy does have a limit. It has a maximum monthly payment of $9,000. So if you're buying a business that the monthly payment would be over that, you're only gonna get the $9,000 and that's it. But that's still a lot of money. And also if you have multiple SBA loans, as long as it's underneath that $9,000, so let's say you have three SBA truck loans and it equals $6,000, all three of those truck loans will be paid for eight months. The SBA has raised their guarantee portion of these SBA 7A loans from 75% to 90%. Now, it doesn't necessarily benefit you, the borrower, but it does benefit the lender. If you watch the video here on SBA loans, that's one of the benefits to lenders is that they get these loans guaranteed at least 75% of their loan. If you default on that loan, they're not gonna lose the money. Now for the PPP, they have appropriated additional funds to the PPP program. This is going to go to the hardest hit businesses, less than 300 employees, you had to sustain at least a 25% loss in any quarter compared to any quarter of 2019. So if quarter three was $50,000 last year and quarter three of this year was $25,000, you stay in an economic loss of $25,000 or 50%. The key is it has to be the same quarter. It can't be quarter four of 19 and quarter one of 20. It has to be matching quarters for which so they have a comparison in case your business is seasonal. They are allowing more expenses to be deducted from the PPP, so not only wages. Now the caveat is they've also extended it to 24 months for the time period for wages, so a majority of your expenses will be wages during that time. The max loan amount for PPP is two and a half times your monthly payroll. Now, in those hardest hit industries, it actually goes up to three and a half times your monthly payroll. Lastly, the EIDL. They passed additional appropriations to increase the EIDL funds to allow for more people to get the $10,000 grant or advance. Now, it hasn't been clear in the language as to if you only got $4,000, if you'll get the additional six, whether you have to call, email, write, whatever. Um, 
It does say that they are to notify the borrowers, but we know during this process, it, the SBA is quite overwhelmed. I don't know if they're going to have the manpower to go out and contact all these businesses. But it also has been eliminated from the PPP portion of the loan. So if you got the PPP portion, you would have had an outstanding balance of the EIDL if you got your whole loan forgiven. That has been cleared now. So hopefully if your bank told you you had a loan, they should be zeroing that out on their books because they should be getting reimbursed back from the SBA. The biggest benefit for all of these programs that they're passing is they are not taxable. So your gross income will not increase for your business based on any of these subsidies, any of these grants, any of these programs. And you can deduct the expenses from the PPP. That was one of the things that the IRS and the SBA had got into kind of a shouting match about was the taxability. Now Congress has come in and fixed that. You will not be taxed on your gross revenues due to these programs. Now in my next video, I'm gonna actually cover, I got approved for my reconsideration for my EIDL and I'm gonna go through that process. It was a lengthy one. I think it took six months to finally speak to somebody from the SBA, provide them additional documents. I am still waiting for those documents to come in to sign, to review, to make sure they make sense, but look for that video here in the next few weeks. Until next time, have a great day.